morning everybody welcome back to the channel so I just wanted to stop this morning in this field this is Malacca spring wheat this is a low input regenerative spring wheat under the uh, SW6 is it following a mustard cover crop it was drilled on the 6th of May we've just gone through with its first eagle uh, it has had a weeding and uh, quite the picture really really pleased with it definitely the weeding it helps it get hold of some nitrogen this first uh, herbicide also includes uh, manganese and magnesium following up on our sap samples from last year we also have sent off samples for the first samples for spring wheat for this year so we'll see what that uh, offers but overall really pleased with the results and the crop is coming along nicely morning everybody it's Saturday morning so uh, apologies for no video last week but uh, I was off on holiday so just to say whilst I was away this field of rye was cut for forage was nice and tall about sort of seven foot tall hopefully I'll get some hold of some footage but what I like to show is you is these green patches so we were really struggling with black grass last year which is one of the reasons we foraged it um, we're going to put a cover crop in the original uh, plan was to go with either soya or a millet after the rye but uh, it's too late in the season so I'm just going to go with a cover crop instead um, it also gives us the opportunity to go through this and mole plough it um, it's really got some pretty terrible drainage so hopefully the mole ploughing will get take hold of that that's the plan for the future I also am going to try and put a drone up and capture where these black grass patches are I'm not sure uh, I quite have the technology for patch spraying black grass yet but certainly I'd like to capture where they are and also uh, this will be getting a glyphosate now to try and kill off these patches before whilst they're still actively growing. My agronomist had recommended a PGR which we did use even though the rye got to seven feet but I can see that it was just going flat as you can see with these bits here most of the stubble's nice and short sort of uh, I don't know what's that four or five inches but you have got these sections where it's pretty long so we'll come through and top like small sections like this to, so that we get a consistent result so that it doesn't cut catch on a mole plow will mole plow pretty close together so as you can see this is pretty standard clean stubble but as we pan across we've got this green patch here this is a black grass patch and if we go in I just wanted to show you this because this epitomizes why the CSS option for um, legume fallow doesn't work for controlling black grass so as you can see the machine the forager has been through it's cut this out of the way door out of the way has cut it down the stubble here is is four or five inches long and so the black grass will have been cut at this height but it so afterwards it's come it's kept on growing and as you can see there it's just nipped the tip off but right next door to it it still puts the seed head up and it will continue to do this it doesn't we've tried topping before you lower the height it just lowers the height at which um, seed the seed head comes along so we have actually already sprayed this another two more here but really it just cutting it doesn't get you control you actually need to you know need to spray it off so it's worth saying that as far as this rye goes got a pre-em um, in order to try and reduce the black grass pressure to get a viable crop of rye the rye has been foraged we're now going to spray this off um, 
and plant a cover crop and try and get another chit of black grass possibly in that cover crop too. What I have been very surprised by is the state of the soil. Now as you can see it's already cracking quite significantly here. I'm going to get my fingers, certainly all my fingers in there. I have modified this pigtail cultivator, springtime cultivator, just to come through, put some cover crops in. But I'm actually thinking I'm going to go with the Claydon just because I can't get any penetration into this surface with a pigtail. I'll just end up breaking it. So I think I'll come through with the Claydon to put cover crop in after the mole ploughing. Some people might be asking, uh, is it worthwhile mole ploughing in these conditions, isn't it too dry? I think the reason it's cracked is because it was so waterlogged and it really has gone from waterlogged to too dry in probably three, four weeks, let's say a month. And it's happened so quickly, that's one of the reasons it's cracked, uh, other than standard poor soil health. So I think if it, the mole ploughing, and I did a, one of my first ever videos we, is mole ploughing in a dry year where we dug down and had to look at the subsoil and it was still holding a mole. So I'm re relatively sure that if we've gone from too wet to too dry in a month, that the subsoil will still hold a mole because it'll still be plenty moist enough. So I'm gonna, ha I'm quite happy to continue with the mole plowing. So we'll get the mole plowing done. We'll uh, move the surface a little bit with the clay, and when we establish the cover crop, and then we'll roll it and get it going again. The concern in dry conditions is the state of the top. Is this? going to create a fissure which sediment can travel down and block your mole. Now actually in this case we've cultivated the top of the field. Uh, I don't think it's too cracked. Looking down here I would say you know that obviously there are fissures um, however it it does form up again and if I'm going in the top of the hole there is no there is no whole um, vertical uh, fissure going up so I conclude that we're a go for mole ploughing even in this dry year. So this is a field of conventional uh, winter beans just next door to the field that we didn't that we've cropped for rye. The reason that that field has black grass pressure and we weren't happy with the we're putting spring bean winter beans in there because we weren't sure it would be it would out compete the beans but as you can see these beans are uh, let's say five foot now they are still flowering so pretty pleased with this crop and we've actually had a bit of success switching from spring beans to winter beans it's also worth saying that uh, this has had two fungicides. It's in a conventional system. I still got a little bit, so I can see some black flies starting to move in, but we are obviously just on the headland here. Uh, because we use a lot of spring wheat in our rotation, even in the conventional rotation, it means that we're getting a better, bigger gap between pulses and I think the beans are beginning to really benefit from that bigger gap. The, one of the problems we have with this particular block is because it's in a bit of a bowl, it seems to hold the frost and we can't grow all seed rape here. We've tried and failed a couple of times. So we are quite limited on our rotation. So having a good crop of beans is really helpful. So whilst we're on the topic of sort of remedial action, I thought it was worth going through another strategy. Uh, this is a field that I bought, um, I don't know, I suppose about 10 years ago now, longer, 15 years ago. It's, it used to be quite close to my farm, now it's uh, the other side of the railway, so it's not that close. 
But one of the problems we had is it had been historically ploughed, lots of use for maize. It, uh, the soil structure was very tired and it was something we were really struggling with. Consistently underperforming field. So this is in grass, not so much as a black grass control, more for um, just to give it a rest and let it recover. Uh, we have quite a large uh, compost heap. The problem is it's quite a wet field. We have put under more drainage, uh, tile drain or um, plastic drain in here, but it's still too wet to move the compost heap during the winter, which is part, which is a real snag. But really, what I'm trying to do here is it's got a grass lay, it's got a multi-species grass lay. It's rented out so um, a neighbour grazes it and makes hay out of it. We put plenty of compost on it. We're just trying to give it, just change it up, uh, use lots of different options, that I, the haymaking, the grazing, just try and mix it up and give the ch and apply the compost and give it a chance to recover and then hopefully when all of this is uh, after a few years I'll be able to bring it back into arable production so that's what we're doing here it's in an environmental scheme as well and actually uh, up in the corner here we even have a secure dog walking compound about a hectare where people can walk their dogs off the lead and that probably uh, more than justifies putting this down to grass so that's just a different strategy we have elsewhere on the farm for remedial action on fields